Welcome to the video series on Myrotic Firewall. In today's interconnected world, where the internet is an integral part of our daily lives and business operations, firewalls are your first line of defense in the ever-evolving landscape of cybersecurity. My name is Wilmer Almazan, and this is the Network Trip. Hello and welcome. This is the first video on Myrotic Firewall. So we're gonna go from scratch. We're gonna start talking about firewall fundamentals. We're gonna talk about different features in Router OS, what the firewall can do, what can't do. So we need to be aware of all the different functions that are available to us. But first of all, we need to understand the basics. And then in the upcoming videos, we are gonna jump into different topics. So we'll be learning about how we can mitigate different type of attacks on internet, how to take advantage of all the different features that we have available in router OS. So the whole point is adding a strong layer of security into the network. This is not gonna be the only layer of protection that we are gonna have. So depending on your topology, it's recommended to have security in different layers. And basically that approach is called security in depth. So when we talk about a firewall, we're talking about a device, we're talking about a function. That means that this can be a physical device that can be a virtual device. We need to have visibility over the traffic and we need to define conditions. And based on those conditions, we're gonna apply actions. So that action can be something like allowing the traffic or blocking the traffic, or simply sending log entries to a server. So basically there are different actions that we're gonna be talking about. So let's go to a common topology, a pretty simple topology that we're gonna find in most of the small companies and home environments. And then we need to think about how that file is gonna fit into that specific scenario. So let's go to the whiteboard and Let's understand what exactly a firewall is going to do. So here we can see that we have inside this box over here, we have our network. So we have a router that is at the edge of the network that is connected to an ISP. So we're going to say that this connection is going to be untrusted. And that is because we don't have control over the devices that are out of that link. So basically once we have a cable connected, to the outside, we don't have control over what is going to happen there. So we have full control inside that rectangle. We don't have control about what is happening in the outside. And then internally, we can have just one network, we can have multiple networks, one router, multiple router switches, and so on and so forth. This can be a pretty simple topology, can be a complex topology. But the fact is that we manage the network, so we have control over that. And we can consider that this is going to be a trusted network. So this is from the point of view that we are managing all the network devices there. How that MyRotic device is going to help adding a firewall functionality. So remember that MyRotic is a router with firewall capabilities. So that means that the main focus on router OS is routing. It's not firewall. By default, MyRotic is gonna allow all the traffic. So if I have one network here, and I have another network here, by default, Router OS is going to allow that communication from one network to the other. Because remember that this is a router, and that's how routers work. How are we going to filter traffic? So we need to define conditions and based on the conditions, we are going to apply actions. So let's go to a device that I have here in my lab environment. I have a laptop that is connected to a router, and then we'll see what exactly is in that firewall. By the way, if you have a Soho device, basically those are all the devices for small office, home office environments, and you can identify them just by knowing that those devices will have Ethernet interfaces or fiber interfaces plus Wi-Fi. So all of those will have a default 
firewall. My route to Gwen bundle a bunch of rules together following best practices and have added that security on those devices. But if we are going with the configuration from scratch, that's a router and there's no firewall on it. So let's see how the firewall looks like. And then we'll start talking about how we can start building our first firewall rules to understand exactly how router OS is going to match traffic and then it's going to apply actions to that traffic. Okay, so now I'm here in this uh, CCR2004. So this device has basically two interfaces here. One is the one interface that is connected to the ISP. The other one is the LAN interface Ethernet where I have this laptop connected. So if I need to check how the firewall looks like, I can simply go here to IP and then firewall and I will go to the first tab, filter rules. You can see that this device is empty and that is because I have configured this from scratch. Basically, I just added the IP addresses. I have a NAT rule to have internet connectivity and that's it. By default, this is a router. It's going to allow all the traffic. So if I come to this device and I send a ping to that IP, that's working because we have communication between the LAN and the one network by default. And that's a huge difference between a router with firewall and an actual firewall. So now let's talk about what MyRotic is able to do and what it's not able to do because we need to be aware of all the features and then we'll jump into some example for building those rules. Okay, MyRotic firewalls will be able to filter traffic based on layer 3 layer 4 and also layer 2 information. So that means that we are able to match traffic based on the MAC address, we can match traffic based on the IP, we can do it based on the protocol, port number, for example we can deny traffic that is going to a specific IP or we can block traffic that is coming from a specific IP or traffic that is going to a specific service so basically that's something that a MyRotic firewall is able to do. The MyRotic firewall has limited access to the application layer. So that means that we can perform some actions on the application layer, but this is going to be CPU intensive. So I don't recommend to use those rules. So basically this will allow to use, for example, regular expressions to check the content, but in general, this is going to be pretty CPU intensive. So basically this is a device that is at the edge of the network, probably in the client's location and has a lot of resources. You will be able to, to have access to the content. But if this is a device that is in the distribution layer of your network and is handling a lot of traffic from multiple clients, this is going to kill the CPU because you will need to be de-encapsulating all the packets, checking the content and that is going to be resource intensive. But if we need that type of firewall, then we'll be able to match traffic based on the MAC, IP, port, protocol, interfaces, for example, the common interface, the outgoing interface. So what a MyRotic device can not do? Deep packet inspection. So basically this means that uh, the router is able to go to the inside of the packet to check the content so basically have full visibility over the content in that packet so there are some capabilities but that is limited so in that case you need a next generation firewall and that's something the router OS won't support at this point application awareness so you need to be checking the traffic the traffic belongs, for example, to Facebook, to YouTube, to different services. That's something that RouterOS is not going to do. So for that, we also will need a next generation firewall. User identity based policies. So for example, if you are using Active Directory or you are using some sort of authentication mechanism and you need to have firewall rules that will be filtering the traffic based on the user information. That's something that RouterOS is not going to do. Another thing that RouterOS won't be able to do is threat intelligence. 
So if you are thinking about the solution that is going to have some sort of cloud service where basically your firewall will be feeding information and also receiving updates from latest threats or attacks or zero day attacks, that's something that is not available in Router S. Remember, we are thinking about multiple layers of security. So Router OS is still is going to need a firewall because we need to have protection in our network devices. We need to have some filtering for the traffic from the users, the traffic that is coming from the users or the one that is going to the users. So we need to protect that. But if you need any of those advanced features additionally to the router, you will need a next generation firewall. So now that you are aware about what is available to us, then we're going to start thinking about how we're going to work with those rules. So when we're planning the deployment of firewall, we need to pick one of two strategies. So the first one is going to be allowing some specific traffic and then dropping everything else. So for example, if we are going to protect the traffic that is coming from the outside to the router, so we can, for example, allow connection from trusted IPs, but we are going to deny everything else. And we're going to have access just to some trusted services, but we're going to drop everything else. So that's one approach. The second approach is going to be simply dropping malicious traffic, and then we're going to allow everything else. So those two strategies are managing the filtering process in a completely different way. So if we think about it, so commonly, when we are protecting our device, for example, if I have the router and we have traffic that is coming from the outside to that device, we're going to allow the specific traffic. So for example, if this device has the Winbox or we have SSH or we have a VPN server, we can allow those services, but then we're going to drop everything else. So if someone is trying to reach a different service, we're simply going to drop that. And then we have limited access to those services as well. Like for example, we are going to have the Winbox, SSH, and VPN allowed, but this is going to be just for trusted IPs. And now we are protecting our router. So if someone is trying to access the device, basically it's going to match that drop and then that traffic is going to be blocked. But if we are going from a trusted IP, then we'll be able to use those services. So basically this is how we're going to set up the protection for the routers. If we think about the second strategy, dropping malicious traffic and then allowing everything else, so commonly, this is going to be if we are going from the inside to the outside. For example, if behind my router I have uh, some users and those users are sending traffic to internet, so I can, for example, drop malicious traffic. So for example, if I want to drop some spammers, so I can drop the TCP port 25, or I will have a specific list of traffic that I want to block, then I can simply drop that traffic and then I will allow everything else. So common approach, option one, traffic from the outside coming to the inside. Option two, traffic going from the inside to the outside. So you can see that those two strategies complement each other. They are not exclusive. If we work with MyRotic Firewall, we're going to find that when we're creating a firewall entry, we're going to find three chains. Basically, a chain is going to be defined based on the direction of the traffic. So where the traffic is going to. If here we have this device and that device is getting a packet and the destination IP is an IP in that device, then that traffic will belong to the input chain. So for example, you are going to establish a, an SSH connection or a Winbox connection or you are going to the web thing. So basically you are managing that device. So that device itself. So that means that the traffic is gonna come here, it's gonna be processed inside the device, it's not gonna leave the device. So that is input. 
If I go to that Winbox, for example, or I'm connected via SSH, and then I send a ping from inside Router OS to any device, that is traffic that is going to be generated by the router. So that traffic is going to be output. So we're going to have a chain that is called output that is going to match all the traffic that the router has created. And finally, we have the third chain that is forward. So forward is traffic that is going to come to the router, but the final destination is not the router itself. That can be an internal client, that can be a website on the internet, so basically an IP that doesn't belong to the router. So that is going to be forward traffic. So let's see how those chains work. So I'm going to go back to the CCR2004. So now in the device, and if I come here to filter rules, so you can see that this is empty. So let's say that I'm going to send a ping to the IP 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. So now I'm connected to the Winbox. So I mean that this traffic is going to be created by the router, and then the router is going to send that traffic out. So if I send the ping, so you can see that the traffic is going out, and it's also getting the responses back. So let's say that I want to see how can I match that traffic. So we can see that this ping is ICMP, and we have the destination that is 8.8.8.8. .8 so if I only want to see how to mine the traffic, I can simply add a new entry. The chain, so you can see here we have three chains, input traffic to the router, output from the router, forward through the router. So now this is output, and I will say destination address 8.8.8.8, .8 .8 and the protocol is ICMP. And then if I go to action, you will see accept. So now here you can see that we have three different tabs. Those tabs will define the conditions. So here we're going to have different conditions like source IP, destination IP, protocol, and basically in interface, out interface, and we have access to some fields in that packet as well. So we have a bunch of conditions, and if a packet matches all those conditions, then we're going to apply the action that we have here. So now I will simply say OK. Basically, we are allowing the traffic. Remember, by default, it's going to be allowed. The idea now is just to see that actually that traffic going to 8.8.8 .8 .8 is matching that entry. So how do I see that? You can see this bytes column that is here. And you can see that the counter is increasing. So I will move this to the beginning. And now you can see those bytes are going up. And that is because this ping is still running. So if I stop that, so immediately this is going to stop because now the router is not sending any more ICMP request messages. So what happens if I want to drop the traffic that is going to a specific IP? So let's say that I don't want to send traffic to quad 9. So I will remove this entry. I will add a new rule. And basically, we say, okay, I don't want to, to send traffic to the IP 9.9.9.9. .9 Action is going to be drop. So drop is silently going to drop those packets. So now I will click apply. I will add a comment. And I will say drop traffic to 9.9.9.9. .9 and now if I come to this device, and I send a pin to that, you can see packet rejected. And also you can see that the counter is increasing in that rule. So you go to statistics, you can see a number of packets. So basically that is going to be incrementing because that pin is still running, but this packet is being rejected. So that's the output traffic. But if I come to my computer and I send a pin to that IP, my computer is still able to talk to that IP. And that is because the traffic belongs to the forward chain. That is traffic that is going through the router. It's not generated by the router. So basically, the router is getting the packet going to 9.9.9.9, coming from my laptop. And then the router is going to check the destination IP. going to say, OK, this is an external IP. 
there is no rule here for forward and basically the traffic is going to be allowed because there is nothing denying the traffic so now what i'm going to do is that i will simply change the chain i will say okay this is going to be forward now so now my laptop won't be able to ping that coin 9 ip so if i go back and i send the pin again that is not working why because the firewall is blocking the traffic now that conversation belongs to the forward chain because the source is an ip that is not in the router and the destination is also an ip that is not in the router and basically now we have that uh, rule that is blocking that traffic so now i'm going to to clear the firewall section now we have a basic understanding of how a firewall works so we know about the chains we know about the different features that router is going to support in our very next class we are going to go over the input chain and also we are going to talk about the connection tracking and we are going to build a firewall that is going to be protecting our myrotic devices